Hello. In this video, we'll talk about how to write the SOP for TIFR interview. Many of you guys have requested for this video and that's why I'm making it. So stay tuned till the end of this video. In this video, you will get some tips and tricks which would help you, you to frame your SOP in such a way that it can stand out from the crowd. If you watch this video till the end, you would learn the following things. How to start writing. Is there any general performa that can help? What can make your SOP look really great? Common mistakes that can spoil your SOP and it's important to know. What are the interviewer's expectation from your SOP? All these points will be discussed in this video. So stay tuned till the end. By the way, this video is sponsored by Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform. If you are worried about entrance examination, Unacademy will get you covered because they have lectures, notes, doubt clearing sessions and several mock tests, which would help you in your preparation journey. Now, Unacademy has uh, notes and lectures for several all India entrance examinations such as GATE, IITJE, NEET UG, NEET PG, CSIR NET, IIT JAM BT, GAT B, all of these things. So it's really useful for the students who are preparing and dreaming to uh, get their future done. Now, right now there is a 20% discount till March 16th. And if you take a subscription right now, you would get a 20% discount in instead of that general 10% discount. So you can use my code AP10 to take a subscription and it would right now give you a 20% discount, but you have to do it before March 16th. There would be a possible price hike. So it's the prime time to take a subscription. And it's kind of beneficial because there are lots of lectures, notes by me and many other educators that can make your preparation journey a bit more easy. Now, let's begin the video by saying that you have no idea how to write an SOP because you have never written an SOP. Question is, how tough is it to write it? And the answer is, it's kind of difficult, but no, I mean, it's not really that difficult. It feels difficult because you haven't write it and you are new to it. So obviously it's going to take some time. So stay tuned. I'm going to tell you the proforma that TIFR has prescribed and it's fairly simple. So it begins with a title, then a background of the problem, then experiment to address the problem and then there would be an expected outcome section with alternative strategies. Lastly, you have to mention the references. So the first title would be 50 words. It should clearly summarize the questions that you want to address and the hypothesis that you want to test. So these two, two things should be covered nicely in the title. Now, let's talk about the background of the problem. But before going that, going to that, I'll tell you that title has to be written at the end because it would reflect your process. So you should have a putative title. Later on, you should polish it. Background of the problem should be divided into four parts. And it four parts can be like taken like 100 each so it should include what is known about this particular problem what is unknown and what is your specific hypothesis and why do you think this hypothesis really makes sense and it's important to test all these things has to be justified in this section and whenever you cite whenever you say something is known you have to cite the literature correspond to it then there is the experiment section here you have to mention about experimental techniques or approaches that would help you to test your hypothesis. And lastly, you have to discuss the outcomes that you are expecting from your experiment. And also you have to talk about the limitations and the alternative plans. So basically you have to highlight the anticipated pitfalls and your backup plans. Lastly, I told you that there should be a reference which has all the citations of current literature. So this is the overall format. If you go methodologically, it's not that tough. So you should begin with reading the research papers. Now, this could be hard for you guys because you are not really well trained to read research papers, right? You are generally trained to mug up informations and using that information, you just get marks in the tests. But you don't know how to really use that information to think something unexplored or think of something new. So this is one thing that 
you should start preparing and start practicing thinking now first of all you have to read second of all you have to think and then you have to write and here are some tips and tricks which would make your journey easy now in the sop use simple sentences don't use complicated phrases or fancy languages it has to be very comprehensive very short and easy always cite the proper literature from where you are taking any reference be prompt and specific about your hypothesis don't beat around the bush just be specific with your hypothesis with a proper amount of background and always mention the limitations no experiment is perfect so all of your experiment might have potential limitations or kind of like anticipated pitfalls so suggest a backup plan it even make your cv or it make, makes your sop more enriched it doesn't make it look bad okay so i would strongly suggest for the paper part you could start reading paper with your friends and while you read paper with your friends and with your peers it helps you to kind of like synthesize new ideas while discussing and it doesn't feel really monotonous when you are doing it with your friends you kind of end up discussing many things and share the frustration of not understanding together so take your own notes while reading a paper because af because after a while you would be reading quite a lot of paper more than like 10 20 papers so you should have a short note about the overall flow of your paper it would help you during the final writing part when you are putting everything together while you are putting everything together put it like part by part use grammarly or any kind of spell check software to ensure that you have everything correct because that's the minimum criteria experiment has to make sense wherever you, whatever you are suggesting it has to make sense it's not just you suggest okay i'll do rna sequencing i'll do microscopy it has to justify that why this particular experiment is uh, appropriate for answering your hypothesis that justification should come out and also in the expected outcome section you should have some idea that what can come out of your experiment lastly describe the expected outcome very comprehensively don't beat around the bush go and straight hit the point now these are the biggest mistakes people make during writing a sop so do not directly copy paste it from the internet right now there are automated software so your application would go from that and if you have plagiarism that means direct copy paste thing your application would be then and there rejected so people are smart please try don't try to be over smart by copying it from the internet it's absolutely wrong thing and unethical to do cite the proper literature in the background section like whenever you are suggesting that research has shown that this particular molecule is involved in this particular process then you have to cite a proper literature that shows this thing original literature citing is really important and valued by the scientists so they are going to judge you from that point of view so do that last thing that pay some you you should not pay someone to like write it for you you can take help from other people you can take help from me my channel or many other seniors you can take help you can take feedback but the worst thing is when you pay somebody to write it for you first of all it doesn't make uh, i mean it doesn't help you out because you don't learn that skill it's difficult but you learn it hard way so when somebody writes it for you your thought process is not involved so whenever the scientists would ask question from there you would be trapped in the long run it would only be a partial solution it can be a long term solution so don't do this part this is absolutely no no so overall um you should enrich your cv by putting or incorporating experiments which are kind of cutting edge for example using crispr cas9 using multi omics approach bioinformatics or microscopy based approach to name a few of them now don't do that big mistake by incorporating everything in your proposal in order to ask your question you might need one of these technique two of these technique or combination of these techniques if your 
Hypothesis testing doesn't require all of these techniques. Just because these techniques are fancy, don't incorporate them in your write-up. But if you can possibly incorporate them, then it's good. But it has to make sense and it has to fit. And it has to justify why you are going to use this technique. So this is the biggest tip that I want to give it to you guys. So with that, I'll say uh, what you can do, like, uh, I mean, wh while you're incorporating these particular experiments, your interviewers would get a sense that you are also well versed with the current literature and updated with the latest techniques. So that kind of gives a positive in, in, uh, impression to their mind. So that kind of, that should be good. So I hope you got a comprehensive sense about what to do and what not to do. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and happy writing. Thank you.